it has been a bad couple of weeks if you're a Grub user. First with the issue over on Fedora Silverblue, where the system update functionality ceased to function. And now we have an issue over on Arch Linux as well. This was reported back on August 26th. So it's not affecting every single system. If you're running a BIOS system, so like an old ThinkPad, or you just want to use BIOS, you can update perfectly fine and nothing is going to go wrong. Only UEFI systems are going to be affected. But not every UEFI system. Only certain configurations, but no one is really sure on whether a system is going to be affected or not. So assuming a system is going to be affected is absolutely safer. And what's going to happen is a couple of different things. Some people are reporting a boot loop where the system just keeps trying to boot and nothing is actually happening. And other people are reporting that it drops them directly into their UEFI, which if they have a UEFI password set up, is going to prompt them for a password. Either way, you won't be able to boot into Linux. Now the earliest affected version is this version right here, which for the sake of my sanity, I'm going to refer to as R322-1. If you rolled back to an older version like say R297 or R261, your system is not going to be affected, it will only be affected on this version and later. I say later because the problem has not been addressed yet. Now I've seen a couple of people confused about this, but besides the fact this is also an issue with Grub, this has nothing to do with the issue over on Silverblue. They are completely separate problems. Also, unlike the Silverblue issue, this is not a problem with the architecture of the distro. This is a problem that could affect literally any distro, and is affecting every distro based on core Arch Linux, so things like Garuda, Endeavor, Zero Linux, and things like that. But I'll get more into the derivatives in just a bit. Luckily, the solution to this isn't really that big of a deal. So R297 had a slightly different issue where sometimes your Grub theme just wouldn't load, but the solution to both these problems is exactly the same. Firstly, what you need to do is rerun grub install, obviously changing the EFI directory to wherever it is on your system. Usually it's going to be something like slash EFI, slash boot, or in my case, slash boot, slash EFI, whatever you're using on your system, as well as regenerating your grub config. Now, this solution is going to work perfectly fine as long as when you upgrade your system and you upgrade Grub, you don't also have a kernel upgrade because you won't be able to properly run Grub install, the modules missing, all of that fun stuff. So I think the better way to do this is individually update Grub, go and run these commands, make sure the system can reboot properly, and then do the rest of the system upgrade. I know this is a partial update, but in this case, I think it's the safer thing to do. Now that's if you're not using secure boot. If you are using Secure Boot, running Grub install blindly is going to completely ruin your system. So you're probably much better off temporarily disabling it, doing the fix, and then re-enabling it. It's not a great solution, but I don't know of anything better. I've not seen anyone suggest anything else. But why is this problem happening in the first place? Well, the first thing that was weird is that it's not affecting every single system. If it was affecting UEFI generally, that would be a pretty easy thing to track down. So clearly there's some sort of hardware configuration or setup issue in the chain here. That kind of threw testing for a loop. Also, someone tried it inside a virtual box and the problem didn't happen. Like consistently did not happen. This is likely due to the way that virtualization works in VirtualBox when running this in things like VMware or other more hardware-like VMs and on bare metal, the problem did actually occur. But no amount of testing has made this problem actually consistent. So after reading a bunch of error logs and tracking down the changes in Grub, it led to this commit right here. Don't display a UEFI firmware entry if it's not supported. Add a new dash dash is dash supported option to command slash EFI slash EFI FW setup and conditionalize, which I didn't know was a word, display on it. This change modifies two separate files. Firstly, it adds in support for this new is supported option. And then in the 30 underscore UEFI dash firmware file, it makes use of the option 
but it also changes an if statement. So this if statement here is removed and then modified and moved down below the FW setup command. So now FW setup with this new option is always going to be run. And we also have this commit, print an error if boot to firmware setup is not supported. So in prior versions of Grub, which is how you would have set up your system, anything R297 and earlier, if your system does not support FW setup, it's going to check if that is the case. If it doesn't, it is not going to register the command. Basically, the command is not going to be available to Grub. Nowadays, though, in R322 and later, it is always going to be registered. And if your hardware does not support this functionality, instead what it's going to do is give you an error message. So here's the problem. If you had a system where it was not detecting or failing to detect that FW setup was supported, it would not be registered in prior versions. But since the new version invokes it 100% of the time, it produces the error unless you run grub install. That is entirely consistent with the behavior we are seeing when not everyone is impacted by the issue. So changes to this firmware file here, this is automatically going to be used in newer versions of grub. But when you are modifying the EFI FW setup file, that is not going to be re-executed until you run grub install again. Which also meant that for some of the testers, they didn't need to remove the entire FW setup call, they just need to remove the new option. Because they had FW setup available on their system, but the version they had set up with grub install didn't have the new option available. So now the problem is known, the question now becomes what happens going forward? And initially I was actually quite hopeful. So the first thing they did is three days after the initial problem, they reverted the problematic commit. The commit they reverted is this one right here, 26031 something or other, whatever that says, this commit right here. They went and got rid of this one. This one is the main problematic commit always running FW setup and always running it with the new option. The other commit isn't that big of a deal. If the command is always being registered and then just prints out an error message if it doesn't work, that's all good. But that's not a great solution because upstream might actually need that change to be there and it might be brought back in a later commit. So unless the Arch team was gonna like maintain their own fork or grub, it wouldn't exactly be viable. So they ultimately went and dropped the revert. But here's the problem that I have. We are, as we're recording this, about five days after the initial problem was known about, and let's say about three days after everything was well understood and we knew exactly how to fix the problem. And you know what doesn't exist? A news item on the Arch Linux news feed. And I don't wanna hear oh, it's a DIY distro, this is what you should expect on a DIY distro. No, it's not at all what you should expect because the Arch news feed is where they post the manual intervention. Even for things that aren't really that important, like this minor change with Pipewire or this thing with QEMU splitting into multiple packages, this is where the manual intervention goes and you should be able to follow this feed to know if there's anything big you have to fix. And it's not even a matter of the solution, you know, is difficult to write out. It's already well established, just copy and paste it into a blog post. Or, even better, you don't have to write anything, link to Endeavor OS's write-up, because they have done an absolutely phenomenal job explaining what the problem is, why the problem happened, how you can fix the problem, how you can fix the problem if you've already rebooted, and everything you need to know. I'll leave this and also the write-up by the maintainer of Zero Linux in the description down below. This one's actually kind of interesting because it also includes a Pac-Man hook to make sure this doesn't happen again in the future. I personally wouldn't recommend running this. Blindly running grub install is usually not a good idea. He has had good results himself and his users are also having good results, but I personally don't like doing this. There is one thing I've been neglecting to say. There is one more commit available in this repo. This commit is currently available inside of Arch Linux testing, and without feedback, it's likely was going to make it over to the core repos. Add an upgrade message. This is the solution they are going with. So, not fixing the problem, but when you upgrade Grub, it's going to tell you this. To use the new features provided in this Grub update, it is recommended to install it to the MBR or UEFI 
due to potential configuration incompatibilities, is advised to run both installation and generation of configuration. Grub install and grub make config. So when you update grub, this is going to be in your Pac-Man output. So if you're not paying attention to the output, you'll have no idea this message was there. Does that remind you of anything? Because it certainly reminds me of something. I don't know what it is though. And I have no I have idea. To type, yes, do as I say in order to install it. And maybe it will install and launch now. Hmm. What is the point of having a It's a oh. mystery. Absolute mystery. In all seriousness though, there's probably nothing better they can do without circumventing upstream. But please just post an item in the Arch Linux newsfeed. I'm sick of seeing this post on r slash Linux where people are breaking their bootloader because you hadn't told them the update was a problem. So let me know, were you affected by this problem? Did you have to go and root into your system and go and fix it from an ISO? Or did you know about the problem beforehand and then fix it before rebooting? I would love to know. In my case, I have been avoiding updating my system just in case the Arch team did something sensible. But it looks like, you know, I'm going to have to fix it anyway. So that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, to and Verapay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.